Hey everyone, Jay from Scooter here again, back with another YouTube video going into some explanations. Uh, today we're going to be talking about scooter compressions, uh, the differences between all of them, the compatibility, the goods and the bads, uh, and I'm going to show you how to put them together as well. So uh, we might as well get started with the IHC. First things first, before we slide the fork up into the deck, into the head tube here, we're going to need our two headset bearings. So we're gonna pop one underneath, one in the top, now we get to slide our fork up through the deck. So we're gonna do so like this. As you can see, we've got a lot of play at the moment there. So what we need to do is we need to grab our compression ring. Now we have two different compression rings here. One is for IHC, one is for SES slash HIC. The IHC one we've got here is a little bit smaller on the inside since we've got a smaller external diameter on the IHC fork. So we slide this one on. And it goes, now there's barely any play. Next step, we need our IHC kit. IHC kits consist of the compression shim, the compression top cap, the compression bolt that we've got there, and we've got a little lock nut uh, spacer too, but those ones aren't too essential. So we're gonna slide the shim over first, like so. Then we grab our top cap, pop it on there. Next, we need our IHC compression bolt, which is gonna go through. Better not forget the spacer. All right, now that that one's all nice and tight, we've got a nice smooth spin since we've got some fresh headset bearings and we've got no wobble in the compression. If this compression is moving at all or the forks are wobbling a little bit down the bottom here, that means your compression is too loose and it could come even looser and fall apart. So that's the last thing we want. Next thing we need to do is grab our bars. What we've got here are some aluminium Root Industries lithium bars. Now these ones of course have a slit at the back so that the bar can squeeze in very slightly and grab a hold of this shim. Now since we've got an oversized aluminium bar, we can only use clamps like a, an oversized double clamp. We've got an oversized triple clamp here as well. You can see that there. Gonna pop the uh, mono on for this one here. Slide that one on. Make sure the label is up the right way. Make sure it's nice and straight. Now before we put the bars on, we've got to remember our top cap. So we've got that one of those right here. That one's gonna slide over the top. Little rubber seal there so it holds it in place. There we go. And we can slide the bars on top, like so. Give it a little tap on the ground. Voila. All right, so uh, once you've got your scooters together, you simply give that one a little tighten up. If you've got two or three, make sure to tighten all the bolts. However, if you've got a triple clamp, you need to make sure you tighten that one first, number one, then number three, then number two. And uh, keep rotating as you tighten up so that you get a nice even clamp. All right, we've got the bars off now, but before I go into the other compressions, uh, what I'm going to explain is what other clamps work, what other compression systems work, and what bars go with them. So I've got a double clamp here, but this one's a little different to the other clamps as this one is a standard clamp. So it's a little bit smaller. What you're going to need for these is a standard bar. Now this clamp we've got here, because it is standard size, it is only going to work with standard size bars. So a bar like the one we have here being oversized, since it's aluminium, is not going to work. Now aluminium bars are oversized on the outside, but standard on the inside. So they do only work with IHC on the inside. If you do have a HIC slash SES compression, aluminium bars are only going to work with SES, which I will get into in a minute. Another great thing about IHC is that you can use standard or oversized bars. Uh, if you want to use oversized, you can grab yourself an IHC to HIC conversion shim. Now this is a shim specifically made to adapt the smaller size of the fork uh, to the larger size of the oversized bar. So we're gonna pop this one on now and uh, get a bar on, show you how it works. Now that we've got the IHC kit off, what we can do is we can grab our IHC to HIC conversion shim. Uh, top cap first, of course. Slide that one on the little ridge there, like so. Then onto your bar. Now we want to grab the top cap and make sure to grab the larger IHC compression bolt that the forks came with, as that's what's gonna work. All right, we've got the conversion shim on. Now we grab a bar I prepared earlier. This is a oversized 
steel bar. We've got a slit as well, make sure you get that slit. As I said before, it needs to crimp in slightly to grab a hold of the compression. So this time we're gonna use our proto clamp. Slide the adaption shim out. That one is for standard bars if you do have them. So this clamp does work with both. All right, now that we've got that clamp on, what we would do is we would slide that one over with compression, make sure the bars are straight and do the two bolts up, and then we're good to go. Now that we've got the IHC compression all disassembled, uh, we're going to get into HIC and SES. So let's do that now. That was easy. All right, let's get to it. First thing we want to do is we grab our fork, slide that one up through like so, there we go. All right, now same deal as the IHC, we've got a little bit of wobble here, but not as much since the external diameter of a HIC slash SES fork is a little bit wider uh, than the IHC. So we need that HIC slash SES compression wing we spoke about earlier. The reason it is HIC slash SES is because it does work with SES compression as well. We'll get into that soon. Now we grab our HIC shim, pop that one over. Now we're supposed to put the top cap on. Usually we would use the HIC compression kit top cap here and the compression bolt. This is the standard size compression bolt. However, these forks do work with a two-in-one compression bolt and top cap. So as you can see, we've got that one there and this one, they're very similar, but this is one piece. So we pop that to the side and we use the compression bolt that the fork came with. All right, now we'll just speak about what bars work with HIC. Aluminium bars, aren't going to work with HIC as they are a little thicker than steel and titanium because the material is weaker. So when it's a little bit thicker, it maintains its strength, but it also only works with IHC compression. So what we need to do is we need to take our oversized steel bar again, make sure that that does have the slit again. It does need to squeeze in slightly to get a hold of the compression. Now these ones are going to work with single, double, triple, and even quad clamps, uh, but they do have to be oversized, remember that. So if we have a standard clamp like the Ethic Sylph we had earlier, it's not going to fit. Now just realize I was going to pop SES together, but we're doing HIC, so I need some HIC clamps back. Jeez, I'm getting good at this, that was too easy. All right, so grab another clamp just like last time. Slide that over onto the bar. Right, now that we've got the clamp on, we would slide it on like so, do it up just like last time, and then we're good to go. Now, uh, we've got the Apex, that's going to work as that's oversized. We've got the MGP triple oversized, it's going to work too. But the Ethic Silf standard I had earlier, as I said, that's not going to fit over the bars as the external diameter is a little too large. So a clamp like this is only going to work with a standard bar, therefore it won't ever work with HIC and is only going to work with standard IHC. All right. Now one thing I will go into uh, with HIC compression is sometimes you can have a shorter style HIC shim or you can have a taller style fork with a longer tube. Now, if I'm popping this HIC compression shim on and it's lower than the lip of the fork, uh, then as I screw the bolt on, we're going to get no compression and the scooter's going to be loose. So, if you ever slide that one on and the top of the fork protrudes past the top of the shim, what we need to do is we need to grab a HIC spacer, slide that one over, and then pop it on. Then we'll have some extra room and we can pop our compression bolt in. Okay, next up, so we've got the SES compression we're going to go into. Uh, now, the way SES compression works, it is a little different to HIC and IHC, as they are internal compression systems. SES does stand for Standard Compression System, and the way it works is the forks go in just under halfway into the fork, and the bottom half of the fork acts as a HIC shim. Now, the fork, you don't want it to go past halfway, just like you don't want the fork to go past the top of the shim as you're not going to get a good compression. The top of the SES uh, holds the bars, it does clamp them, but it doesn't clamp them onto anything, it simply holds them. So your bar must not have a slit in it. If it does have a slit, that means that as you squeeze, the bar will keep crimping in more and more since there's nothing inside and it's going to damage the bar, it could break and crack it, and that's the last thing we want. All right, so we're going to show internally here. We'll pop that out. That is our compression bolt and top cap that comes with the SES. 
Now the lip I'm talking about, if you can see in just there, it's this little lip right here. Now, as I said, this little lip is the same as the top of this compression shim. We don't want the forks to go past there or we won't get a good compression. Before we put this one on, we do need to take out the adaption shim, just like we had in the proto clamp, because of course these ones work with standard and oversized bars without a slip. As you can see, we don't have a top cap on at the moment. You can choose to run one if you want. Uh, I haven't run one ever, as that's just my personal preference, but it really is up to you. All right, now I've just slid that one on, but there isn't too much of a gap between the top of the lip and the fork. We do want probably at least two or three mil, just to give a bit of room for compression. So I'm just gonna slide a uh, spacer on. On. There we go, there's definitely enough clearance. We've got about that much clearance now, which is perfect. So again, we're going to take our compression bolt and top cap, as this is the one the forks came with. This one came with the SES, but it's not going to work as the bolt's a little bit too small and it's for most other forks. Okay, so now we need to pop a bar in, but both of the bars we have on the table here already have slits. So, what I can explain is how bars with slits can work with SES. So if you're riding, let's say IHC, and you want to switch to SES, uh, but you don't want to swap your bars, what you can do to render this slit obsolete is a SES conversion shim. So we would usually slide this one into the bar. Now they are made to be a tight fit as they usually don't come back out. So if you are wanting to switch your bar to SES and use one of these shims, uh, be prepared to just continue using that compression. Now we're not going to pop that one in today as uh, we probably won't get it back out. So now once we'd have the conversion shim in, we would slide the bars into the SES like so until it, uh, it's going to bottom out on the top of the top cap there, the SES cap. So once that one is all the way down, then you want to start doing up your compression. Make sure that you do up the clamp bolt on the bottom first, and then move up to number three, down to two, and then up to four again. What this will do, as I said with the triple clamp, is it's going to provide a very nice, even clamp so that you've got a stable compression. Now there are different types of SESs. As you can see, we've got an oversized four bolt SES, but they do come in three bolt, and they also do come in standard. So uh, as I said earlier, clamps like these that are oversized come with that adaption shim, but this SES you can see here only works with standard bars, just like the Ethic clamp we spoke about earlier. Here they are both here. So only standard bars are going to work with these clamps. Make sure that you check the specs before purchasing as it's vital for the compatibility. Okay, so now uh, I'm quickly gonna run through the good and the bad of each uh, style compression and uh, which one would be better suited to you. So with SES compression, a con would be that they are a little bit weighty. Um, so these style clamps, they're around the, they can range from even two to 300 grams. So they can weigh about the same as your fork sometimes. So if you're a bit of a weight ween, I'd probably suggest going to the HIC and IHC. Uh, however, a good thing about the SES is that uh, you can make your bars a little higher. So uh, if you've already got a, a bar, you know, you've owned that one for a while, say you've grown up a little bit, or you just need a taller bar, what you can do is you can grab an SES, and since the bars only go in halfway, you actually get about an inch and a half more height out of your bars. If you put some spaces in as well, uh, you can get even more height again. So that's definitely one of the best benefits of SES. Now the good and the bad for HIC and IHC is pretty much the bad and the good for SES. So of course they're going to be a quite a lighter style clamp, really good for people who want a uh, you know, lightweight scooter. However, you can't get any extra bar height out of them since the bars do need to slide right down to the compression ring. Um, so you know, if you do need a taller bar, you may have to purchase a new one. So compression kits. Now with IHC forks, all IHC forks come with an IHC compression kit as uh, that's usually what you're going to be using most of the time. Uh, the IHC to HIC conversion shims are sort of a newer style product um, and they are to convert to different style bars. But usually you're going to be running IHC, so they always come with an IHC shim. All right, now if we're speaking of a HIC slash SES fork, 
Uh, they don't come with a HIC compression kit in the box like IHC forks do because, hence the name, they can work with either compression. So, uh, you know, if you were to buy one of these forks and you already had an, an SES that you want to use, you wouldn't really have a use for that HIC kit. So that's why they are purchasable separately. Now, great thing about Scooter Hut and our 3D Builder app is that if you purchase a scooter with HIC compression, you don't actually need to purchase the HIC kit because we include all hardware for free. Now, if we're speaking of compression rings, IHC forks, as well as coming with their compression kit always, they do come with their compression ring as well, the IHC compression ring always. So they come with IHC forks, that one there. HIC slash SES forks don't come with that compression ring. Uh, as well as not coming with the compression kit. But what you can do is you can get a compression ring out of a brand new headset. All right, so if we unwrap this one, get the parts into my hand. I took a few out earlier. So that one comes with that HIC slash SES compression ring. You can purchase those separately on most websites, including ours, but they do come with every brand new headset. We can also speak about the crown race today. Now, a crown race in 2020 is probably considered a little old fashioned. Uh, what they do is they slide onto a fork. Uh, for any fork that doesn't come with an integrated crown race, what you use is one of these. Now that little crown, that crown race there that's built in, if we grab our bearing, that bearing and that little ridge, that dome on the bearing there, that slides down and sits perfectly on that angle and we have a perfect nice fit. Now some older style forks, they simply, the tube came straight down and it was a flat right angle. So what you needed to do was you needed to grab one of these crown racers with the same style angle there, slide that one over and what it would do is it would bottom out on the flat surface of the fork and then you would grab your bearing and it would sit on that edge like so and we would have a nice perfect fit. Now you don't really have to worry about this one these days as most forks, most HIC slash SES forks do come with a built-in crown race now. Um, IHC forks, it is worth noting, they all, all of them, they do come with an integrated crown race. So if you are running IHC, you will never ever need one of these. Another little thing I will go into today is with top caps. Now if you do choose to run a top cap on your scooter, you may find that when you slide it over the fork, uh, it does touch the outside edge of the head tube there and it does scrape a little. Now that's not going to be good for compression because it's, it's going to stop your whole compression turning. So if it ever is bottoming out on the top of the deck, what you do is you grab a little spacer. Now you can get smaller, thinner spacers than these, but what we would do is we would pop that one over our fork, pop the top cap on and now there is a space there where it's not going to be touching. Another thing I might mention is that if you have an oversized bar, an oversized uh, steel or titanium bar, uh, and you want to run SES, but it's already got a slit, the same deal as the aluminium bar. You grab your SES conversion shim, uh, but you can grab an I oversized one. So this one is standard. However, you can grab oversized and that one's going to slide in and it's going to render that slit obsolete. So you can, uh, you can run SES uh, with a standard or oversized bar, aluminium, steel, or titanium, a slit or not. There are always ways to run it, uh, which is the great thing about SES. It's probably the most compatible compression. Okay, so I think I've covered pretty much everything in regards to compression. Um, you know, once you learn how the ins and outs work, it does get pretty easy. However, if you do have any questions about compression, about bars or forks, anything in general, it really doesn't matter. You can just give us a call, give us an email, and we can help out further. As always, thank you very much for joining us for another Scooter Hut video. I uh, hope you enjoyed and learned a few things today. Uh, we will be back with another video soon enough, so keep your eyes peeled. I'll catch you later.